Welcome to the Whole Church Podcast, your favorite church unity podcast, probably. If you want to hear from pastors, professors, and everything in between, right, sure. And, you know, the occasional train talk. Right, right, yeah. Uh, have we got the podcast for you? All right, everybody, thank you for tuning in to the Whole Church Podcast. I am your host, Joshua Knoll, and here is your co-host, Agent T.J. Blackwell. Hello. Yeah. It's nice to be um, here again um, forever. Uh, let everybody know. Um, he often, if you see him, you probably understand why. He gets confused with the other agent, Colson. So um, we usually call him agent for short. Some people do TJ just to avoid that confusion, though. So just, just mm-hmm. so everyone's aware. Yeah, that's sort of the situation yeah. we're at. Um, in order to help support us here, we want to go ahead and before we jump in, um, we have a Patreon account. You guys could visit us there and help donate however much you want. Um, basically it just kind of helps us, but also it allows you to listen to our too long, didn't listen series where we ask our guests to summarize the podcast in 10 seconds or less. And also, uh, so- sometimes you get some occasional different perks, uh, coming up. We have our 50th episode. We're going to record big celebration. We've invited all of our patrons to be a part of that in a special way that ho- hopefully you guys will be able to see what we're talking about here in a few weeks when that episode drops. But, uh, if you want to cheat and be a part of that episode, you can subscribe for Patreon for like three weeks, join, and then unsubscribe. It's a genius right. plan, really. Yeah. You could bamboozle me exactly the way that I told you. And I would not be the wiser. Yes. Yeah. Because he never is. Nope. Uh, also, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and uh, if you can subscribe to us on iTunes or SoundCloud or whatever you listen to your podcast on, that would be great. Leave a comment. We love to hear from you guys, and occasionally we share comments. Haven't done that in a while, but uh, if you guys leave a comment, we'll probably do it. Actually, this podcast has been talked about for a very long time. Uh, if you remember the end of last year, we kept saying almost every podcast. Soon we'll have ageism talk with Chris Brissy, Alicia Matthews, and George McLaughlin. Well, we have finally recorded this episode. Well, we're recording it right now. By the time you've listened to it, we have recorded it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's taken a while. Please welcome uh, Alicia Matthews and Chris Brissy. Everybody applaud. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. <laughs> okay. So if you've ever listened to the podcast before, uh, you know we like to start off with an icebreaker question. Uh, it's you, pretty much usually not necessary. We usually know our guests fairly well. But we like to do it anyway. Uh, so, and if you haven't, been listening to the podcast before. Welcome. This is the silly question. So, Chris, Alicia, and Josh, if you had to pick one board game to become competitive, I get an international level. What would it be? And whoever wants to, I'll, I can go first. Please do. So, card games do also count. I would like to say, oh, not like God. not like standard card games, not like solitaire. But, like, you know, if, if you have to buy it in a special box set, it counts. Uh, so the board slash card game that I would choose to become, like, a national sport almost would be Killer Bunnies yes. and the Quest Brilliant. for the Magic Parrot. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> How to clarify it. Because it is just one of the best games ever. I'm pretty pretty good at it, and I think I could make a career out of it. I, I think you could. You wouldn't. Over a year without losing, playing a lot. It's one of those games that it does have, you know, random luck, but it also a lot of strategy and deception and other stuff kind of thrown in there. It takes a lot of tactic. To play. So, uh, Josh, I'm actually going to make you go next, just to give our special kind guests a little bit of extra time. Okay. Thanks. I um. You're welcome, Chris. <laughs> I, I love would you. now say. Killer Bunnies and the Journey to Jupiter, since you said the other Killer Bunnies, because yeah, I, I agree with you. Killer Bunnies is just the correct answer, but because I feel like cheating, I'm gonna go with uh, Munchkins actually, hmm. uh, especially because the game changes a lot. You know, depending on which packs you have, there's a lot of expansions. There's a different ways you can combine the game, and there's so many different strategies to be able to play it. It would sort of be like the card equivalent to D&D 
being competitive, but also you're not confined to one genre, not just D&D. You could be pirates and Marvel and who knows what all mixed in. So I think I'm going to go with that. Competitive munchkin. Right. Yeah. Awesome. So, Chris or Alicia, if you're ready, which board game do you think would, you know, make well, the best competitive board game? I'm not... <clears throat> I'm not real good at board games. <laughs> so, and you guys probably know that because we have hmm. played Killer Bunnies together. <laughs> and uh, although I, I feel like I have the ability to uh, brainwash people into um, believing I do or do not have the whatever, I don't even remember how to play the game. But <laughs> anyway, I I would say. I'm not really good at it, but I do like chess. Oh. So I would like to be good at it so that I could beat everybody. But yeah, that's a long term, okay. never happening goal. Well, I think I would be willing to watch people play chess. It's well, kind of can. boring. You yeah. can. Yeah, it is competitive already. Yeah, that's true. But that's okay. That's fair. I'll let yeah. you say chess. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'll allow it. <laughs> video games is a different story mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah Alicia um I'm gonna have to say Clue oh, just cause good. it's like okay. really deductive mm-hmm. yeah a, and it's that, like that different each, each time I mm. actually hate playing Clue with my family and mm. if Valid. you're listening to this uh, you yeah you know why because my sister, <laughs> sometimes my sister will just be right the first time she guesses. Wow. That's so she so just long wins long. on her. Yeah, Which it is. is. My big sister, Taryn. Oh, sweet. She's oh. like yeah. one of our patrons. She might be on the yeah, she episode. Is. <laughs> yeah, I've never played. Clue's good. You, we should play at a camp. I think you, you would we love should. it, Chris. I, I have it at my house. I actually do, but I've never played it. All right. Let's so. all go to Chris's house. I do. Let's do it, man. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. Man. So before we jump in too much, I uh, we, we need to introduce our guests a little bit better. We want everybody to kind of get to know them. Me and or TJ and I know Alicia and Chris both really well from camp. Actually, the same camp that me and TJ met at, if you've or me and Agent have met at. If you have followed the podcast, you know me and Agent met at church camp back when he was little and my first year as a cabin leader. And um, I also, I think before I met TJ even, or around the same time is when I met Chris. And uh, Alicia, we met probably five or six years ago. How, how long have you been going to camp, Alicia? Um, That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I started working... I think three or four years ago. So I oh, guess it's been about six years okay. in total think, going to camp. I don't think I met you until you started working. So Yeah, that was my freshman year. I, Those are rookie numbers, Alicia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll TJ, get there. <laughs> how long have you been doing camp again? Uh, I think it's 15 years wow. now. We actually did an entire podcast talking about camps and speaking in tongues with uh, Mandy McLaughlin and Chris Gallo. the first episode Chris was on. Um, you guys should check that out. I don't know exactly when it was, but go back and find it. It's called Camp and Tongue Talk. It was either episode seven or episode eight. Yeah, it, it's it's been a while, but um, it, it's it's really good. And we've even done a bonus episode to tribute to how special camp is to TJ and I and all of the kids who go. Um, we're not gonna be able to do camp this year, which is kind of sad, but um, extremely sad. Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. but. Those kids are still in our hearts, still praying for them, thinking about them. And, um, of course, we all have lives outside of camp as well. There's other things to look to to be positive and think about. Um, For example, uh, Brother Bear's album is now back on Spotify. They took it off a while back, and now it's there. So, uh, praise God. Uh, We just did this to announce that. Thank you all for being a part of this. This is the announcement that Brother Bear is back. (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, We did want to talk about how people of different age are treated differently in the church. That's the main topic of the day. Um, some younger people feel neglected in the church, and even some of our elder members of the church also feel a little bit neglected as far as what role they have in the ministry, right? The church is supposed to be, all of us are ministers, we're all a part of it. 
what are we doing? That's the big question. A lot of people feel left out. That's what we're here to talk about. Um, so that you guys can kind of understand where everyone's coming from, uh, I wanted to ask Chris and Alicia, um, one at a time, I guess, if they could tell us some about yourself and uh, your ministry or what you feel led to do for the church. Uh, Chris, okay. would you like to go first? Hey, sure. Yeah. Um, well, I'm Chris, and hi, I've been Chris. in. Hi. <laughs> So I've been associated with the uh, church organization for about, I would say, like 17 years or something of like that. Wow. Uh, maybe a little bit longer than that. Um, but when we started in ministry, uh, well, we, we started the church in 2011. And I'm sorry, 2001. What am I thinking? 2001. <laughs> yeah, that's how old I am now. But anyway, uh, 2001 is when we started attending. And then uh, my past, my dad, who is also my pastor now, um, uh, he got into the ministry shortly after that. And I kind of grew up in that, you know, space, that ministry environment. And so we would go to uh, revivals and church services as he evangelized across the state. And uh, one year, actually, at camp, I was about 12 years old. I had just turned 12, and I felt the call into ministry uh, at church camp. And I was actually saved, uh, baptized, and called into ministry um, almost in the same day, I think. So, uh, but anyway, I, so I do anything from like uh, financial work to outreach to um, leading the services, moderating services, preaching. I do a lot of preaching and teaching there within the church and uh, visiting homes, you know, anything a normal pastor would do. It's basically where I am now. <laughs> so a long road in very, in a very short amount of time. And I'm happy with every moment. Awesome, awesome. So a lot of a lot of opportunity, a lot of ministry. Uh, Chris, you're you're still pretty young yourself too, right? I am twenty, almost twenty six. I'll be twenty six in a couple of weeks. Oh, wow. I think that counts as young. Yeah, yeah, I think it does. I think you're young. Yeah, younger than you're Josh. Young to me. Sometimes I wake up and I feel like I'm sixty. You know. <laughs> I mean, but, and I got a couple of gray hairs, so I don't know if that qualifies me for wisdom or not. But I feel does. pretty good about it. It makes you dignified. Exactly. Yeah. Not that I think the world revolves around me or anything, but pretty much anyone older than me is old and everyone younger than me is young. And that's uh, just how everybody yeah. sees it. So. Then I must be a baby because you're old. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't look that. That's hurtful. <laughs> I'm like 28. We were in the same camp many uh, years, so I, I, I think you're not that much older than me. I think but Chris is to the Josh. only individual. I, I think I've technically been his cabin leader, and I've also been in the same cabin as him. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me, man. I, Camp is yeah. a very interesting time. <laughs> I've, I've always kind of, uh, all my ministry has revolved around being with people that are older than me. So I'm used to it. I don't like people. Interesting. <laughs> and as such, we're going to let Alicia just, talk, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alicia, what can, you, um, what can you tell us about yourself and where you feel your calling is at the church or you're part of the church? Well, it's kind of complicated. Well, uh, I think it was last year I felt that God was calling me to teach. He didn't tell me like where or <laughs> how exactly that was going to work. So I'm going to study education in the fall and we're going to see how that goes. But really outside of what I've been doing at camp, I have really haven't had a lot of opportunities to minister. So I think that's really where my heart is right now, just camp and helping like the nine to 12 year old age group. Awesome. Awesome. I, okay. Um, you, you just graduated high school, right? Yes, I did. So she's a few weeks ago, counts. actually. She super counts. As Congratulations. Well. She is our, Thank you. congrats. <laughs> <laughs> congrats. Um, yeah. it sounds like you still have a, a little bit of uncertainty, which I, I think is good, where you're not entirely sure. You know you need to teach. You're not sure exactly where or how. And that, I think that's still that's fine. That's good. Um, I remember 
when I was your age, and that's how I know I'm old. When I was your age, <laughs> I remember Brother Baker telling me that a lot of times following God is like driving a car in the dark. Uh -huh. Wherever your lights can see, you drive there. You see a curve, you turn. That doesn't necessarily mean you know what's after that turn. <laughs> Okay. But that's okay. Yeah, so I think that was my old moment for the podcast. Everyone's welcome. Old moments with Josh. No, thanks. Yeah. I'd like it. I, I'd pay Patreon for that. Yeah. <laughs> Don't say that because we'll start doing it. Yeah, all right. New patron, <laughs> patron segment is just me talking about words of wisdom from Josh. Oh, God. Yeah. Old all right. So, Josh. Yeah. I like mm -hmm. it. so uh, we'll start with. Alicia, for this next part, uh, how do you feel the church views people your age compared to how you would like them to? Yeah, you know, we're starting to get into the ageism stuff now. Okay. <laughs> oh, the podcast started now? Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that that can depend. You know what I mean? Like me going into church, how I am and who my parents are, like people don't see me a sort of way. They just kind of see me you know what I mean but then maybe a friend who's into other stuff maybe is not traditional them going into church they get the side eye so that really it really does depend on the person and who they come from and who they look like and how old they are basically but generally I don't personally have a problem but I do see some of my friends who are non-traditional coming in and getting judgy looks. Could you help us just provide a little bit of context on who your parents are for those of you? Oh, know? right. Uh, my dad is Bishop Howard Matthews. Ooh, I like how that sounds. Okay. Bishop Howard Matthews. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom's a doctor, and they both do a lot of, like, talks around the church. My dad's actually the prayer minister for the state, and He's probably popped into your church occasionally. We go around a lot. My mom does health talks or church and stuff like that. So we're yeah, everywhere. You guys were you guys were at my church for I want to say it was like a like a Christmas or something. And I, I don't think remember. So. Yeah, it was, you, you guys were just was going there. On. I was yeah. Like, oh, hey, Alicia. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've so actually there, been to yeah. your church a couple of times. I don't know if you were there all those times. Yeah, I'm not. I, I go around a lot. He's I feel that. I was <laughs> there not too long ago, and you weren't there, TJ. I was sad. Yeah. Aww. It's Josh's fault. I'm God, sorry. Josh, let him off every once in a while. Sorry. I, I, <laughs> I've kind of low-key hired him and paid all of my extra wages to TJ just to stay at my house and play Smash Bros. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Never mind, TJ. You're forgiven. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but my extra wages are nothing, though. So. <laughs> yeah. So, Alicia, uh, is there anything you would like to do with the church that you feel like would be challenging to do because of your age? Hmm. I don't know. That's kind of a hard question. It is. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, it's fine. You want huh. Chris to answer first? I like yeah, to put him on the spot. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do you want me to answer the first question or just the second Please. question? Yeah. Both? If you would. If you could yeah. just give us the answer to life, actually. Okay. Well, uh, some say 42. Thank you. Is mm -hmm. the answer to all the life in the universe. Um, God's favorite I, number, clearly. Yeah. I, I think Smash Bros. probably ranks up there pretty high. I agree. Um, <laughs> but no, as as far as uh, the way people view uh, my age and people that are my age, I, I feel like um, young adults is what I've kind of been grouped into at this point. And I think they're very valuable within the church. And I think the church views that in a way, um, but maybe not in the ways they should. Um, but I, I feel like they value them a lot higher maybe um, than other age groups within the church. Now, as far as what I would like to do uh, and uh, what kind of challenge it would bring, I, I think that um, I've done every position within the church that I would want to do. 
uh, and will continue to do those things. Uh, but pastoring, being a senior pastor, is very difficult for someone my age. And um, but it is something that I aspire to do. But uh, it is very challenging with differing age groups in the way they view uh, people of my age. So mm -hmm. that sounds almost ageist. Uh, uh -oh. Yeah, I, I, I think. Uh -oh. <laughs> but. You know, I, I've seen examples of ageism in both ways, uh, whether it be against young or whether it be against the older generation. I, I've seen it happen both ways. And you, go ahead. Could you give us vague examples, you know, not name or anything, but uh, you said you've seen both. Could you tell us? Yeah, that? sure. Uh, I mean, I, I can give you an example just of myself as far as uh, the younger uh, a spectrum of things. You know, when I was starting out, it was very difficult to get a schedule uh, or to schedule an event at a church where I would go to speak or any kind of arrangement, whether I was singing or speaking. Uh, it was very difficult because it was only youth services. So I was only speaking to youth, which meant a lot of our churches didn't have youth ministries and which was actually a great opportunity for me because I, I could go in there and encourage the church the importance of having youth ministries and children's ministries and things like that. But I, I wasn't really uh, ever scheduled to just do revivals or um, or to just just to speak like an adult. And so I always kind of got a little bit discouraged about that because um, I felt like. Um, I just felt like I I was only viewed as that youth minister, kind and like it uh, box. yeah, it puts you in a box. It it limits your opportunity to to branch out and to do other things. I wouldn't say bigger things. I mean, because youth ministry is just as important as any other ministry within the church. It just yeah. limits you to the way people viewed you, because so many people over the years have called me that little preacher. <laughs> you know, oh. that young preacher, that little oh. preacher. And, that hurt me. you know, as it, it, I always kind of disregarded it, it. You know, people don't know any better. Um, mm -hmm. But I always thought that my, my preaching and, and the things that I do was, was far um, different, actually. I, I, I can say this. I've always felt very uncomfortable leading youth. I just have. And I, I have felt and maybe it's because I started in doing nursing home ministries. I don't know, <laughs> but and got used to that. But, um, you know, it was always like, OK, he's 16, so he's going to preach to the teenagers, you know. And right. so that was always kind of, you know, that end of the ageism spectrum. But I've, I've seen it the other way where churches will force um, more uh, uh, young crowd minded or, or targeting, um, techniques in their church services and kind of, uh, disregard the thoughts of the generation before them. So, uh, churches that have gone completely contemporary and, you know, no longer observe some of the old, uh, traditions that some of those before us are accustomed to making them feel very uncomfortable and within their own church. And I, I do think that it is important that we move on to the future and the future generations, but it's also important to honor the, the past and honor the traditions of, of those before us um, without focusing on one or the other. Yeah, that you know, has a unique and important role. Yeah, everyone. And so I have seen it um, where, you know, ministers will be not necessarily turned away, but not given opportunities to serve because of their age uh, as they are older, um, as well as, you know, I don't know, maybe you've got somebody who's young at heart and really loves youth or children's ministries, but because they don't look the part, uh, they don't get that opportunity to serve in the way they feel God has called them to serve, you know? And uh, mm -hmm. now the, just to speak outside of our own organization denomination, I, I know of a few non-denominational churches 
where, um, you know, obviously it wasn't advertised, but I hang out with mostly ministers and pastors and stuff. It's just a weird thing that I do. But um, I know a lot it's of not places. not weird. Yeah. <laughs> but I know a lot of places where they um, basically have told people, hey, because you're not married or because you don't have kids, it's actually a really big one. They don't want ministers who don't have children, mm. which is mm. odd to us. But, uh, you know, a lot of churches, you know, they see in the Bible where God honors people with children. And they're like, okay, well, we want our pastor to have kids. And it's okay, but that doesn't mean God wants everyone to have a lot of kids. Like, <laughs> that's not what that means. Yeah. Are so, you sure? It doesn't say, like, have 11? <laughs> everyone must have Maybe. 11 yeah. if they're going to do ministry. Yeah. I know a lot of Ukrainian families who would like to disagree. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I, I mean... And even, um, I'm sure Chris can attest to this, is also kind of a younger married person. Even just in the short time that we got married and started going to church, it's like the idea of being married, even though, you know, in our church, it's not, you're not going to be kept from any ministry roles. People in the church definitely do treat you differently. A lot more differently than people out there in the world do, it seems like. I think they view you as more of an adult. Yeah, like in church, that's kind of like, that's the marker you you made. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's not a good thing that churches do that and have a certain opinion. I, I know when my dad was looking to enter into more of a pastoral role, he, he was kind of seen and, and, and kind of um, advertised, if you could say, it's kind of like the premier type of pastor. He's mm-hmm. married, he's got two kids, he's 35 years old or something like that. You know, like the, the picture perfect pastor you know he's the golden boy the golden and and uh even though they had not met us if they had met us and they would have uh, probably <laughs> turned us away but because <laughs> we were a little little um yeah little, little screaming running around little kids you know no. but i hope alicia doesn't think she's getting Talk to off Lisa. the hook <laughs> for the question she, has to she still has to answer it um right. before we do <laughs> I, I did actually, I wanted to ask you something about your previous answer, though. Alicia, you said um, you think some people, especially young people who aren't traditional, get kind of side-eyed when they come to church. Could you kind of explain what you mean by that? Yeah. Um, so I have a friend who is, well, she's not walking away from God. She's walking away from just church, if that makes sense. Yeah. And her reasoning is her the people who are, in church are very judgy and when she does something that goes against the norm well she goes to a very baptist church so the norm uh, is not the norm in most of our churches if that makes sense we, we so, do support uh making fun of baptists on the show of course okay. <laughs> I was worried. No, we, we <laughs> literally last episode we talked about not making jokes about it. <laughs> <laughs> come on <laughs> All right, never yes. mind. But yeah, <laughs> she goes to a very Baptist church. So what's against the norm for them is like normal for her and for us. So uh, when she goes to church and she does something that's against what their norm is, not necessarily like against what God says, but just against what they're used to seeing, they they definitely push her aside and they look at her differently and they just treat her differently. And she can tell. She's not stupid. And Did she raise her hands in a Baptist church? <laughs> <laughs> I have no clue. Maybe. <laughs> Blasphemy. But yeah. That's basically where I'm getting this from. Just from what she's told me about her church and what she's experienced. Yeah. Okay. So. Does that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So was there anything that you would like to do in your church? that would be hard because of your age? Um, like, can for example, no <laughs> yeah. Or just say yes. <laughs> like, if you'd be I, <laughs> as a matter of fact, yes, there is. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> I always kind of wanted to be in charge of the choir, mm. uh, just because I've been taught a thing or two. And I know that would be hard because your people who have been singing in church for 30 years are not going to want to listen to what a 20-year-old kid says mm. about 
you know, their technique and their voice. Plus right. a, a 20 year old yeah. is supposed to be in the youth band. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. True. Those boxes. Well, and to, to TJ's point too, that, that's actually even out in the world, you know, that that's even a thing. Um, having worked in fast food for so long, you know, you see a lot of times where you'll have a younger manager telling an older crew member what to do and they just don't want to listen to young people, you know. Mm-hmm. But also, like Chris said, you know, young people just being the young people worship thing. It's, it's the boxes. I once knew a kid. He was in ninth grade, and he was the head organist at his large Baptist church. Wow. That's impressive. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I used to make fun of him for it, but <laughs> <laughs> I would too. <laughs> but he he loved it, and that's what he did. And and uh, I think he did go on and and lead the choir and and you know in a very traditional baptist church you know no yeah. no electric guitars whatsoever well electric guitars are sin so but yeah only if they're yeah. playing in a minor chord yeah yeah minor keys uh the lockrian scale that yeah. yeah that's bad don't do that i, I don't mm-hmm. use it enough to get this joke but i feel like i should laugh still <laughs> let's in, let's include uh <laughs> josh somehow um uh-huh. <laughs> um, Q <Q-Mario> Mario uh, music. <laughs> bum, bum, yeah. bum. Wait, so are we in fact letting Alicia off the hook then? Because uh... <laughs> Alicia. Uh, <laughs> well, I guess to answer the question, there are definitely things that if I were to ask to do, they'd be like, "You can't do that. You're eight. You're six. <laughs> Wait, how old am I? Seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> but I just don't feel those aren't questions I would ask because those aren't like the things I feel led to do, if that makes sense. Okay. So like nothing that you would want to do, but there are things that would be hard uh, because of your age. If you For sure. If decided yeah. you wanted to do them, which you don't. Yeah. yeah. Like if I were to like try to go like preach in a revival just right now, they probably wouldn't let me do that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the youth revival. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. only maybe. youth revival. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, man, and I said we weren't going to be so negative, and here I uh, am. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Chris, uh, you you mentioned your time preaching as a head pastor. Uh, you actually you let me speak there a couple times, which was a great blessing. Um, yeah, I I love being able to speak. If anyone listening and wants me to speak, yeah. no, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, you uh. Having been there and having talked to you about it, I know it was mostly an older congregation, right? Yeah. Uh, what were were there some were there any particular challenges being? I think you were the youngest South Carolina pastor or head pastor, yeah, in um in the state. And being so young and preaching to such an older congregation, were there any specific challenges with that that you feel like I don't know you wouldn't have had if you were older yourself yeah I I mean all of it was a challenge Uh, I mean I was uh, just barely 20 years old uh, and so I had never actually been away from home and we had to pack our bags and and move Hmm. and uh, and so (laughs) getting acclimated to buying groceries for ourselves while also balancing the books of the church was you know you know there was a lot going on and uh, for a 19 year old or 20 year old. Um, but I, my church congregation was, uh, I think the mean age uh, was somewhere around um, 65 to 70. Listen, wow. Chris, I know a lot uh-huh. of that is nice people who are <laughs> <laughs> the average age. Um, it, it was somewhere around there. And uh, so we had a lot of white headed people. Everybody was older than me. And most of them were uh, twice or triple or quadruple my age. So um, it, it, everything seemed to be a challenge. Um, I had to kind of watch my preaching to make sure that I didn't bring in too many new ideas. And, and uh, when we did business meetings, it was a nightmare. It, it was, I mean, I would dread the entire week when I had to do a a business meeting or a conference and um, because, you know, 
I can't really explain it. it. It was just one of them things where, um, you know, being young, it, it just didn't, to them, didn't make a lot of sense, me telling them what to do with their money. And, um, and, and so it was very difficult. And so that was a big part. And then, um, uh, as well as doing ministry to like toward them, um, having to, uh, relate to them at a, in not just a spiritual, but also a personal level was very difficult and something that if I'm honest, struggled at, but, um, you know, over time you, you build this bondage with people and unfortunately, and fortunately, I think I was blessed, but also, uh, kind of hurt by the fact that people kind of saw me more as their son, you know? Uh, oh. and, and so, or their grandson, you know, <laughs> which meant that they loved me, but they also didn't want me to tell them how to live their lives. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which and is... so, you know, it, it just kind of, it's kind of funny though. Uh, when I went to my introductory, in, introductory, yeah. Okay. Service, uh, when they introduced me, I, I spoke for a few minutes and the district overseer finished up and he said, well, church, what do you think? Right. And one of the ladies in the church said, uh, she, she got up and she said, well, at this point, we'll try anything. <laughs> oh, 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 man. I'm sorry. That's tough. So at that point, I was like, OK, <laughs> but um Within the first couple of weeks, the first couple of weeks were were just difficult getting uh, with them getting acclimated with me and yeah. and, and some of my beliefs. You know, I, I wore a wedding band, and in that church, it was like a no no. It was a really bad no no. Uh -huh. And um, but it was something very quickly that I I told I assured them that that wasn't going to change. You know, I was going to wear my my wedding band to service, and it wasn't an act of of disrespect toward them and their beliefs. It was just, um, it, it was more that I held a high reverence to it and what it symbolized as me and my wife being married. So, but there were a lot of things. I, I think so many times I was called the little preacher, the little preacher man. And, um, you know, you wouldn't walk up to you, Josh, you, you wouldn't walk up to your pastor and say, Hey, little preacher man, <laughs> you know, <laughs> And that would be, I might do that to Josh Preacher. That'd be really funny. I'm, I'm just trying to imagine walking up to Pastor Gary. Going, hey, little Gary. Preacher. I'm on the hey, little Gary. How's it going, little Gary? How I'm you doing, little Gary? Yeah. Um, I don't think he'd speak to me. The Little Pastor sounds like a great, like, kid's book, but yeah, uh, not a title you but want to have. In, in yeah. reality, yeah, it, it, it was one of those things that just, it was a constant reminder to me that I didn't have the respect um, from them that you need, and I don't mean to sound like some kind of power hungry person when I say respect, it's more uh, like a, res a respect and trust, you know, yeah. and yeah. Um, yeah. Go Sorry. ahead. Sorry. I, I You're good. You. I, um, it, it wasn't, it wasn't all bad either though, right? Like they, they were good no. people and, and I don't think they meant ill toward you. Um, no, I, I would say it's an, it's an experience that um, was, I mean, I, I'm extremely blessed to have had the experience. And although that um, there were a lot of times that it was very discouraging and disheartening, um, there were a lot of moments as well that um, if you look at the weight, like the scale of, of the importance, um, you know, there was more things that happened that I viewed as important than those that were uh, demeaning or hurtful. And so, um, you know, when when we decided to open up our church to start serving food and providing supplies to to the, those in need within our small community, that was a big deal and something that the church really, really um, supported and got behind um, and trust entrusted me to be able to do and that was an awesome experience there. And, and there were many other experiences too, um, that, that I would say I can take with me and say, 
uh, that they were great. And, and so it wasn't all bad. It wasn't all bad. I, I wouldn't say there were very many moments where my age was a, um, a positive thing, though. Oh. I will say that. I, I don't think there were very in, many instances where they viewed my age as something positive. Unfortunately. Is, yeah. Because, you know, you want the young people to be like willing to lead the church. Because, mm-hmm. you know, young people are the future. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that, Chris. Yeah. Uh, now, what would you both like to see change in the church uh, concerning how people of varying ages are treated? Uh, Alicia, if you would like to go first, if there's anything that comes to mind. Uh, well, the first thing that comes to mind is for, uh, how do I phrase this? <laughs> Carefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Don't, don't be too nervous. <laughs> don't, you don't have to be too careful. Um, just that sometimes when me and my friends want to voice something, there's really, well, that's changed, but there's not a, t- a lot of people we can go to and voice that and have it be taken seriously and taken to the next step. So I definitely think that there needs to be more people who are willing to listen to the younger people and Mm -hmm. hear their suggestions for what they want to see in church, like not just on a youth group level, but just, you know, for everything. The church. Yeah. Yeah. The church. So you just, you'd want people to listen to young people, to people your age. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Chris, is there anything you've Um, ever, you know? Well, I think in both aspects, in the youth and in in the um, senior ministries, I think uh, with youth, just being able to have more opportunities. And there are things that churches need that, unfortunately, you know, people of earlier generations don't know how to do. You know, things like social media outreach and uh-huh. uh and in overall aesthetic of a church I, I think that young people have a lot to offer in those areas uh but they're not necessarily listened to or given the opportunity to do so and those churches that do understand that hey you know there's a, another ministry out there to reach and they're younger than you know 55 uh and and they put younger people in charge of those ministries. I think they see a lot of value, and I think that those churches uh, prosper from that. Uh, and then allowing kids in in youth ministry to step up and to do more, and to teach them that they that it's okay that if you're 12 years old, it's okay to preach, you know, and uh, it's okay to become a minister. And and so I think that um, my my story has been used as a testimony to young people a lot, uh, by myself. I mean, um, <laughs> well, me too. I've told people your story before. Oh, yeah. Well, no, no, I want it. I, I, I want my testimony to be given to those that are, that are young and even younger than me. Now teaching the, the limitations too. I, I mean, understanding that, um, when you're, uh, 12, you, you may not know as much as somebody who's a little older. You know? yeah. And so encouraging them to learn and, and to uh, transition into a space uh, bigger than what they are. And uh, it would be awesome to see more of that. And then as far as uh, the earlier generations, those that, um, you know, above the age of 55, uh, I, I'd like to see churches not just toss them away and yeah. and act as though they aren't there. I think there's a lot of overvaluing, but I think there's a lot of undervaluing in this current state of church. People I think that a lot of churches, I, I think that a lot of churches undervalue um, senior ministries and, and those involved with those ministries. And a lot of times they kind of have to just sit and watch church go by. And not, mm-hmm. they're not, they don't have a voice. They don't really, um, because it, I, some pastors and ministers kind of view it as you had your chance. Now it's somebody else's turn. And 
I just don't think if if I was that age, I wouldn't feel very comfortable in a church that didn't accept me as an older person. And I have heard stories uh, and read articles about churches who have literally kicked out their older members and have sent them to other churches. And I just don't agree with that. And um, I, I think that it's important we value and we hear what they have to say. And even if it's contrary to what we want, uh, still hearing them out and trying to find a healthy balance that is all inclusive to everyone and, and not just the younger generations. Um, hey, TJ. Oh, mm-hmm. Hey. Do you mind if I answer this, that question too? Uh, of course not. Cool. I am... Um... See, because I am at the point where I'm like near the end of when I guess you consider me young and just young people. Uh, or young I people. stopped considering you young a long time ago. Um, you don't count. Um, the church. <laughs> no, uh, just just thinking through all the stuff I've been able to do and the opportunities I would have liked to have. Part of a lot of different ministries. Some were with our church. Some were with other churches. Some I just did on my own. You know, and I think. Uh, to the younger people and, and to the older people, I, I would like to say, if you just decide to do a ministry, God's going to make it work out. God will see it through if it's his will. But to, to the church, what I would like to see change, I think a lot of that stuff is, um, I'll, I'll just, I, I don't want to pick any one ministry because I don't want any church to think I'm specifically talking about them. But a lot of times it feels like, it's almost like the church is placating it. Like, okay, yeah, you do that. We support you, but you know they won't really bring it into the main part of the church, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, even even thinking about this podcast, I mean, we've had a few pastors on here, which I think are great. What I would like to see is some pastors having people running podcasts, you know, some of the younger people speak at their church and talk about what they're doing, you know, or you know, vice versa with the older people. I know some older people doing great ministries. Bring them in, have them talk about what they're doing. I think it would be really important to just kind of showcase it, put it in front of everyone instead of placating some of these other things that they just kind of ministries that, you know, the church just kind of lets happen or, you know, we support you. Put it in the forefront. Mm -hmm. So what do you all think would change if we saw these, you know, changes happen in the church? You know, listening to the young people, respecting each age group, giving them all special attention that they need. What what do you think we would see happen, uh, Alicia? Um, I definitely think there would be more unity, and there would be more chances for more open conversations about deeper subjects. If that makes any sense. <laughs> right. Yeah, big fan of unity here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is actually your favorite church unity podcast. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Chris, what do you, what do you think we would see change? Yeah, I think unity. I I think our churches really focus on, or they should be, and I think a lot are focusing on diversity and focusing, I think a lot on racial diversity. Um, and I know our churches, mostly because of our community and who's around us, if we aren't diverse, then we're not going to make it as a church and uh and we're limiting ourselves to who we can reach and but i think more than just racial diversity age diversity is extremely important um and so having a church united on all those fronts you know men's women's youth uh seniors uh young adults all those ministries need to be working together and if we can do that man I think that churches would grow tremendously. I mean, Mm -hmm. it would be powerful to see the amount of lives that were changed if we can find a way to bring balance to all those things. Mm -hmm. It's just very difficult and it takes a long time to teach as well as to implement. Yeah. The church should be a reflection of the community. Exactly. So like if your community is... 68% 68% Hispanic Americans, 68% of your congregation should be Hispanic people, you know, ideally, you know, mm-hmm. something close to that. 
or at least that's who you should be trying to reach. Like I was saying with the, you know, not placating, putting this stuff in the forefront. Like, let's say Alicia started a young women's ministry at our church. She's not, but say she did. I, I don't <laughs> think she is. You're not, are you? No, I'm not. <laughs> you could, though. You could. Yeah, but, I could. Let's, let's say she did, just, just for kicks. And, you know, her father, the pastor, brought brought her out and had her speak to the church about what they're doing and made it a big deal instead of just saying, yeah, you can do that. And, you know, let's say um, Chris Galloway and his son Cameron just did started their own, like, little mini podcast. They had Cameron come up and talk. You know, Cameron's very young and talk about their podcast. You know, I think if they started doing some of this in the church, bringing it to the forefront, you would see that growth that Chris was talking about, right? Because everyone would say, wait a minute, my ministry matters, which would make more people want to actually be active in the church and do ministry. And the more people who did, the more people who would be reached, and, you know, so on and so on. It's like a chain effect kind of thing. Dominance. Well, I think a, a good way to, like, I don't want to say, well, I don't want to say, but I think it's appropriate to infiltrate the older side of the church is, uh, you know, when they do, what do they call it at most churches, uh, elders, breakfast, stuff like that, you know, for the, the senior citizens in the church yeah. to kind of fellowship with each other, just show up. It's, uh, Could make friends. you know, that's yeah, what we're that, saying, that older, Could make friends, guys. <laughs> yeah, that older generation kind of gets used to things if they can't get rid of them. Yeah. So well, if you become one of those things. That's true. Well, and it's also, there's a huge communication gap. You know, you, you brought that up and it just made me think, like, yeah, that's how we communicate with them because that's how they communicate. They meet in person and talk. And I'm like, oh, that's just not how most people our age communicate. We text, we call, we Skype each other, apparently. But, right. yeah, so I, I think that's creating, like, a second layer of this barrier. It's just that communication barrier of, yeah, you're not going to be able to text, you know. I think that's a good idea. Right. Go into some breakfasts. Old, yeah. The older ministers, everybody loves food, first off, but they really appreciate people who are willing to speak to them in person, so I think that's a huge step. With that being said, I uh, we a few months ago, actually, when we were originally trying to do this podcast, we were able to record some with uh, Brother George McLaughlin, the state overseer for South Carolina, and... Um, he had some encouraging words uh, to the young people at our church and the role that he would like to see them be able to play. So, um, yeah, here's, a, here's that clip for everybody. A lot of people feel like, you know, the only real ministry opportunities are, you know, in worship or as a pastor. But obviously there's a lot of other ministry opportunities. And I was just talking to you about some of that and how, um, you know, there's just a couple challenges that come up. And I think one of the big ones... Well, you were saying a big one is vision. I was thinking also um, finances. You know, a lot of people you know want the church to support young ministries, but don't think about the fact that churches struggle just to support their own pastor. So it's really hard for the church to support financially other ministries as well, right? You're exactly right. Some of our churches are are, are challenged uh, financially to to uh, support the lead pastor. So. Uh, and finance is a big issue, and, and uh, there are uh, there are areas that uh, need help, but the finances are limited there. Uh, so, you know, you might have to be bivocational in in your ministry. You might have to work a job to help support. Uh, what your calling is in your life, uh, and that's not uh, that is not unusual. A lot of our pastors are are bivocational because uh, the church is uh, not financially able to support them. So uh, that may that may be a you know that may be a, a, a situation that a, a young emerging leader may find themselves in. Yeah, and that's not just young pastors even some of our older pastors are having to do other things to support themselves correct. right yeah so um correct yeah i think you know i put a big focus on uh the pauls are just as important as the timothys and vice versa right that paul always had a younger minister alongside him that he was building up and using in ministry and 
were doing their own ministries. Um, I mean, I, I, I wanted to name it. It's a, I'm, I'm like a, like sort of like a paradox, like what they have at a, at jobs. You know, when you first get your first job, there's always that issue of uh, they say you need reliable transportation, but you're like, hmm, I'm getting my first job so I can buy reliable transportation. What do you mean? <laughs> and uh, I feel like you also have, sort of have that problem in in this kind of arena where young people are wanting to be ministers, but you know, a lot of the congregation feel like, well, why should I listen to you? You don't have the experience. But until they're able to be in the minister roles, they'll never get that experience. So it's a and, sort and of you're a challenge. Right. Okay. And you're right, Josh. There are some congregations that have a different mindset, but there are other congregations uh, that that are more open and show more mercy and grace toward uh, toward the development of a leader. You understand what I'm saying? I mean. Yeah. When you're young, you're not going to do everything correct. I mean, you're, you're going to make mistakes. I mean, we all, I mean, whether you're young or old, we all, well, we're going to make mistakes. But I mean, you don't have experience and you don't have training. Uh, and so you're learning as you go. And some, some people just automatically think you ought to know of this, uh, for others, for others are more gracious toward that and, uh, and, and accepting that but but that's those are some challenges definitely some challenges that the young uh emerging leaders are going to face you know uh, yeah. they're they're going to face those things so you know it's a part of the process of of of, of uh, who can who can survive that and and who can overcome that if the calling is great within you you understand what i'm saying if the if the, if yeah. the, the purpose and the plan of god is uh, is 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 prominent within you, then nothing's going to deter you from uh, from fulfilling that purpose and that plan and call that God has placed in your life, even uh, though the, those that you serve may not always accept you, but that you, you do what God has called you to do. Be faithful to the call, uh, and, and uh, God will bless you. That's, that's, a, that's, that's a good word. So, just practically then this will be the very last thing um for individuals what's the most practical thing that we can do to kind of bridge the gap between the pauls and timothys the older ministry ministers and the younger ministers what's just a practical thing anyone could do i i think just to build relationships i mean to to bridge whatever gap there is between the generations or the culture or whatever just build a relationship, you, you know, um, and, 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 and let them know their worth and their value and, and how important they are. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it's just, I, I think it's, it's pretty basic, uh, Brother Josh. I think it's just uh, loving them and, and, and embracing them and accepting them. Uh, and and them doing showing the same back to us, you know what I'm saying? Uh, because they're they're uh, that is a healer. That is a uh, uh, it, you know builds bridges and uh, and and, and, uh, and it connects us. And that's what we need connectivity. Uh, we don't have to understand one another completely, but we do need to walk together in in, in love, in unity, and harmony. Uh, to advance the kingdom of God, you know, and so uh, to those that are listening, of the younger, uh, that are, are younger in in, in, uh, in, in in leadership, I want you to know how valuable you are, how much you are needed. Uh, I don't know what you're facing as far as the challenges that you're dealing with uh, in trying to develop the leadership uh and, and the skills and, and the, uh, the the call and the the, and the, the gifting that the Lord has uh, placed you into. I don't know what kind of challenges you're facing, but I want you to know from my perspective and from this office, we support you. We we want to embrace you and encourage you uh, every way we can to fulfill the call and the gifting that God has placed in your life. And to find that place and to fulfill that that call that God has in your life, I 
I'm, I'll come alongside you and do whatever I can to help you and support you. Uh, uh, and I want you to know how valuable and important you are, not only to me, but to this state and to this church. Uh, you are loved, and uh, we value you uh, and, and, and want to do what we can to help you find your purpose and your plan as far as God's uh, big plan for your life. Amen. I think that's a that's a yeah, good uh, good word to end on. Thank you for your time, brother. You are welcome, Josh, and thank you. Keep up the good work, brother. I'll I'll certainly try. <laughs> and yeah, that that was just incredibly encouraging stuff. Really loved Brother McLaughlin. Uh, I wish we had better audio of it, but uh, I think I think his words were very empowering. Mm. And um, very busy guy. Yeah, yeah, yes. You had to catch him in his car. So, yes. In his car. Yeah, it was, it was rough. But um, some of what he said outside of that phone call actually spoke a lot more to me than even the encouraging words we just heard. Where he was talking about how a lot of older ministers feel threatened by young ministers, right? Because they're going to come in and take their churches. They're going to come in and do all these jobs. And they've been doing this for so long. And, you know, young ministers are inexperienced. You never know what dumb stuff they might say. And, uh, you know, Brother McLaughlin obviously didn't say dumb. Those are my words. He might but, would, though. Yeah, he might but, uh, <laughs> he'd, he'd think about it. <laughs> but, you know, he talked about that, that how um, some, some people are scared. He's not really sure why, he said. And um, I recently got to go to Kentucky, as some of our listeners know, see my family. And my papa said some stuff that really got me thinking, Where, which part of what reminded me that we needed to do this episode of the podcast that we – haven't done for so long, <laughs> but he, um, he's not able to get around. He can't really leave his house and stuff. And, um, he's had a hard time figuring out what he's here for, what he's, he's supposed to do. He felt like he wasn't important. And, uh, I think, think that's a scary place to be. And also he talked, we were talking about, you know, churches being closed for the quarantine. And he mentioned that, you know, it's not really been any different for him. He's not been able to get out of the house in a long time. So he's been listening to church either online or on the TV. And some of the stuff that I've realized we've taken for granted, you know, as young people, we just go to church. We have this community. We talk to other people, young people at the church, and we go out to eat. And not not just my grandfather, there's a lot of older people who just aren't able to do that. And that's part of the church, I feel like, is also being missed, right? There's these old people who are scared that their place is going away, that they no longer have a role to play. And some of them don't feel like they can be part of the community anymore. Or maybe they literally can't. They can't go out. So if people don't go to them, they just get left out. And that, that's a really scary and hard place to be. And um, just as Brother McLaughlin shared such encouraging words to our young people, I wanted to ask our guests, Alicia and Chris, if y'all had anything encouraging you would like to say to the older people at our church who maybe feel a little left out. Uh, Chris, would you like to go first? Um, yeah, sure. Um, I I think as far as older members, you have a lot to give, uh, for one, um, the amount of wisdom that comes from somebody who's been in the church for so long, um, you know, whether or not you're given the opportunity, which I know there are a lot that aren't given the opportunity to serve, um, still push and, and, and keep doing what God's called you to do, because in the end, um, you know, we've, we've committed ourselves to serve God until we can't do it anymore. And you may not have the energy that you once had, but you, you do have uh, things to give. And I've seen, uh, we have a pastor in our organization that I feel like he's got to be a hundred years old by now, (laughs) but he's still pastoring. He's got a little small church. He, he's still going, he still loves it. And and I hope that he continues to to do what he he loves to do. And uh, and, and for those older ministers too, look at younger ministers as an opportunity to share, to give experience, to um, to encourage, and and not be so much afraid, but more enthusiastic that you have an opportunity to raise up the next generation of pastors, evangelists, preachers, teachers, those sorts of things. If that is uh, 
the only thing that you can do, I think that that's a powerful job within itself, honestly. Oh, yeah, which um, a lot of young ministers doing here. You know, I can't speak for all of them, but I, for one, I could sit at Brother Baker's feet and just listen to him talk for probably 24 hours straight and be fine. <laughs> I've uh, tried before. <laughs> he doesn't like you. Uh, he, he's, one to, he's hard to get away from <laughs> once yeah. you get him going, but I love it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Alicia, did you have any encouraging words that you would like to share to our older people in the church or older ministers who maybe are beginning to feel a little left out? Uh, yeah. Um, just to those who starting to, just to those who are starting to feel like they've reached a point where they can't do anymore. They're you're, we're always going to need you. <laughs> like there's not a day I don't draw something or write something or do something that I don't show it to my dad. Cause I constantly need him to know, need him to tell me what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> and I'm <laughs> a lot <laughs> valuable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're always going to need somebody to look over our shoulder and point out the mistakes or the things we need to improve on. Respectfully. Yes. <laughs> yes. Preferably respectably. Yeah, if possible. Yeah. 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 Awesome. And, uh, I, I would like to, with TJ's permission, make mm. a commitment for our podcast whether you're young or old, any ministry that you're a part of that you just want to tell people about, we will be a platform. We will listen to anyone, right? Uh, we sure. say in our intro, pastors, professors, and everyone in between. Th that includes you. You know, if you feel like you're being left out, contact us. We won't leave you out. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, I'll allow awesome. that. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So thank you guys both so much for answering all of our questions. Uh, Sure. If if you've listened before, you probably know what's coming up. If you haven't, congratulations for listening Surprise. to your first, you know, most full episode. Uh, what we do next as our last part of the actual show is the God moment of the week. Traditionally, it's not really from the past week usually, but uh, it's just a moment from you know the past. Whenever could have been today, could have been six and a half years ago, whatever. Yeah, we don't care. Where you saw God in your everyday, like your real life. Uh, and I will, I'll go first. Oh, awesome. If that's, yeah. Uh, yesterday, my God moment of the week was yesterday. Uh, it was my birthday, actually. Uh, so that was cool. Thanks. Happy birthday. Uh, oh, thank you. Um, but we went out to eat for the first time, you know, in three, three months. Uh, which was really awesome. Everyone was really nice. And it was, you know, it's just, you know, God's still here with us, you know. You, you, we've been through some tough times recently, but, you know, we're getting out there again. It was just really nice. Praise God. Yeah. Thanks. I'll, um, I'll let them do mine next so our guests can think on theirs a little bit if they want. I um, Mine was from today. Surprisingly enough, yeah, I um I was listening to the Holy Post, which is uh, the podcast that Phil Vischer does. We've mentioned it before, and TJ loves listening to it with me at like three times speed. It's his favorite pastime, actually, and um, <laughs> he, he hates that I do that. But they were Sky Jathani's part of the podcast, and he was answering a question from one of their audience or whatever. I, I don't remember the exact details, but it implied a certain theological view that most people hold. And before answering the question, he said, I just want to go ahead and say, this implies this view. Not everyone holds to that. It's fine if you don't. I just want to throw that out, that it's not necessary. But if you do hold to this view, here's my answer. And it was just such a nice moment to me because I was like, oh yeah, I'm not the only one who's just consciously thinking about church unity. I'm not the only one who's going, okay, wait a minute. Let's make sure we're including everybody. It's nice to know that there are other people out there doing the same thing. You know, it was just, it was good. Right. Uh, Chris and Alicia play rock, paper, scissors. Okay. <laughs> rock, paper, scissors, shoot. What do you got? Uh, paper. I had rock, so you win. Hey. <laughs> There's no way to verify. We're just hoping that the bastards don't let the truth. <laughs> well, 
<laughs> Although I've played Killer Bodies with his dad. So, uh, oh. <laughs> oh, man, that brings out the worst in you, doesn't it? Oh, man. Brings out the worst in him. <laughs> in, in, in hey, anyway. He's competitive. We're anyway. talking about com- yeah. that game being competitive. Yeah. yeah competitive. He's good at it. He, and he, yes, he is. He could go yeah. pro. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sign him up. So, anyway, yeah. Alicia, <laughs> what was your God moment of recent times? Um, My God moment of the week. Uh, just this week, I think I've been kind of realizing God's providence and how he just does things for a reason. Like, um, so in December, we had a family member pass away and he had a lot of lung complications. It, it's fine. He got saved two weeks before he died. So it was well, you know, a lot of go. blessings just in that. <laughs> so he passed away in December and he had a lot of lung complications. and. It was the day after, I believe, his birthday when we all went into quarantine. And we were sitting at the table, and I was sitting next to my mom, and she was like, isn't it great that he passed away when he did? Because if he did, if he were in this, he definitely would have gotten it, and it would have killed him and wouldn't have been able to be with him. Hmm. Just, I don't know, timing. <laughs> God, yeah, great timing. Mm. Yeah, almost like he made it or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chris, what was your uh, what's your God moment? Yeah, um, actually, it's my wife received her college diploma. Just she just graduated as a bachelor that. in psychology. Cool. Um, so now Good she can her. finally fix me, I guess. <laughs> well, you know, you can try. Nice. Yeah. Not too much of a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she she graduated, and uh, first of all, I'm extremely proud of her. She's like oh. a super genius. And uh, <laughs> everyone say congratulations, Brittany. Yeah, congratulations, congratulations. Congrats, Brittany. It's fun having four people because we can like do this stuff now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, but yeah, she graduated, and um, I was actually the first one to open the package because we had planned when it showed up. Well, actually we had planned when it showed up to do like a surprise party for her and, uh, and to give her the, the diploma. And when I opened it up, it was just this, this thing of realizing how good God is, you know, and, wow. and being right beside her, I knew how stressful it was coming down to the end. And especially with the virus, and all the uh, precautions they had to take within the university, it made schooling very difficult for her. And um, she also works full time, uh, 35 mm-hmm. to 40 hours a week. So having walked that with her and seen her go through that um, and to see that diploma, I was extremely excited for her, but also in realization that this was um something of God, you know, something that God had allowed her to do. And it's a area that she wants to take and, and to use it for a very godly purpose and trying to helping people with drug addictions. Um, that's, that's where she wants to focus. And she unfortunately does have to go to school some more to mm. do, to pursue her, her big dream. But um, it is the, the, the fir- first big leap into uh, that field where where she can finally start to uh, see God use her in that way, and yeah. that was just exciting for me, um, and and just as I mean, m- way more exciting for her, of course. But um, it just reminded me of how great God is and and His provision as He um, helped us all get get to this point. And uh, so it's just I, I'm so thankful to God for how great He is. Awesome. Nice. Awesome. Those are good that, God moments, guys. Yeah. That and leads us to the end of the show. Um, after the end of the show, we're going to ask Chris and Alicia to hang on for a minute. They're going to do our Too Long Didn't Listen segment, mm-hmm. where we're going to ask them both that they can summarize this entire podcast in 10 seconds or less. So yeah. if you want to hear that, you go to our Patreon. Um, support us any way you can. You know what? Uh, Monetarily. Was, yeah, you can go with that. <laughs> or, you know, just comment on random things that are available publicly. Just be like, like you, and I'll be like, thanks. And uh, that, that'll be cool. 
<laughs> but if you can support us monetarily, um, you know, you can do it for as low as a dollar a month. Most of us lose that and change in a month. So if you don't mind helping us with your loose change, that'd be cool. But uh, any, anything you could do, we greatly appreciate it. We love the people who follow us on Patreon right now. We're very excited to hear from them on our 50th episode coming up, um, which is going to be just a great big celebration where we're going to have some of our past guests and our patrons, and we're just going to talk about what all God's been up to and what we're going to be doing next. And it's just going to be a great call. Don't miss that episode. Um, also, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, SoundCloud, iTunes. Leave comments everywhere you can. We want to hear your voice, and when you leave comments, it allows other people to see the podcast as well, which helps us get the word out. And the more the word gets out, the more people know unity is important, which makes it more likely to happen. So help us out with that. We'd greatly appreciate it. Um, shares and comments do the most of really anything. Um, we could pour money into advertisements, but it never does as good as just having someone share it. So you guys could do that for us. We'd really appreciate it. Um, what else, DJ? Uh, well, what are some future guests we'll have? Well, our 50th episode will have a few people. It'll be great. But, um, we also have uh, an episode coming up with Sister Rose, um, who we've had on the show before. Um, we're going to have an episode with Father Jonathan will be back, actually, to talk about what the Greek Orthodox Church believes about the doctrine of sin. So I'm excited to be able to talk to him about that. Uh, Pastor Gary will be back on the show to talk with us about what our church believes about sin. And... Um, and was it Adam Rhodes that you mentioned earlier, Chris? Alan. Alan, Alan Rhodes. Rhodes. Yeah. We're going to contact him, you know, see if he'll get on here. He, he would know. love it, I'm sure. Uh, great. great. And, and of and, course, at the end yeah. of season one, DJ. Uh, we will have Francis Chan. Who just doesn't know it yet. <laughs> right. <laughs> yet. <laughs> We're trying. All right. Thank you guys for listening. Keep listening if you are on Patreon. Yeah. <laughs>